Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Krishna and uh, I've been a part of distributed systems since a very long time. Uh, Korba uh, to be exact. And uh, I've been involved in uh, Kubernetes since version 1.6 and mostly implementing it in modernization initiatives uh, for our clients. I also have with me Amrish. So Amrish, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, Amrish here. So I am currently working as a senior associate consultant in Infosys, and I have uh, expertise in front-end technologies like uh, Angular, React, and then uh, single-page applications. Uh, more than uh, five years, and uh, over the year, I'm working in open-source contributions. So mainly in backseat, uh, backstage framework side. So mostly in uh, plugin side, I have worked. So today I'm here to walk you through an uh, authorization plugin uh, POC uh, that we have created using uh, backstage permission framework uh, integrated with uh, OpenFG uh, with a small demo at the end of the session. Yeah, go ahead, Krishna. Great. Thanks so much for that, Amrish. And uh, both of us work for the Infosys Modernization Group. And as a part of the Modernization Group, uh, we basically work with clients on uh, containerization modernization projects. Uh, using a host of CNCF projects. So for this session, as Amri's mentioned, uh, we are going to be showing you a plugin which uses OpenFGA for fine-grained authorization with Backstitch. The first probably five to ten minutes, uh, we'll just talk a bit about Backstage, OpenFGA, and fine-grained authorization where it fits in. After that, Amrish will uh, show us uh, a plugin uh, which will enable us to do fine grain authorization and how it can be integrated into uh, backstage now we all know um, the rise of internal developer portals over the last couple of years at least i remember uh, 2023 annual report of cncf where backstage was one of the highest velocity projects and there is still a lot of interest in um, internal developer portals and platform engineering uh, when it comes to our clients. Uh, Backstage essentially offers us integration with Kubernetes. So this is native integration as one of its core plugins. It offers us visibility across a large portfolio of services. It offers us very intelligent search capacity as well as the ability to create technical documentation and to have that surfaced in context along with the service that that documentation refers to. In addition, Backstage is 100% extensible. Um, even the core features are provided via plugins and it is very simple to write custom plugins. So within Infosys, we work with um, fairly large clients who want to implement Backstage for all of the benefits that we have talked before. And in this context, it becomes very important to have Backstage implemented with RBAC from the beginning. And to do this, you have the Backstage permission framework. What the permission framework does is it allows you to take the authenticated identity of whoever's logged into the portal and define policies by which you can authorize just the right level of permissions for that specific identity or that specific actor. Now, when it comes to authentication, Backstage has native capability to integrate with a wide variety of authentication providers. However, when it comes to authorization, the permissions framework expects you to write code within Backstage by default in TypeScript in order to define the authorization policies. Now, this is not really the best practice in the industry because when you are talking about a client that has even more than one portfolio, a few dozen to a few hundred applications, you don't want authorization policies to be spread across various applications you know, within the portfolio. Instead, you want your authorization policies 
to be centralized so that they can be defined in one place and enforced in a single place. And, and we will look at uh, security, right, Krishna? So. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's all about security, right? So it improves security and it improves the visibility also. Mm. So if you have a central place where you are defining authorization policies, then there is one place where you can look at the audit logs and figure out who's logging in, who's got what permissions, what is happening within the applications across your portfolio. So why fine grain authorization? Um, typically, the legacy way of applying authorization is just to give all of your people different roles. For example, manager, developer, platform engineer, and just based on the role to take the authorization decision of what's allowed and what's not allowed. Now, this does not take into account things like whether, for example, the platform engineer has or should have access to that specific resource, um, whether the developer, for example, should be able to deploy applications in that portfolio, whether he belongs to that portfolio or not. Some of these decisions, they are forced into the application instead of being a part of the authorization system. However, when it comes to fine-grained authorization, the advantage is that the authorization decision is taken with a lot more data, including what the resources, what the role of the developer is, what the relationship of the developer with the resources. So in this way, the authorization decision is basically taken with a richer set of data. It's taken within the authorization platform itself. So talking about fine grain authorization, um, OpenFGA is the CNCF project um, that offers relationship based authorization, which is a VBAC. It's based on uh, Google Zanzibar, which is the similar uh, paper and uh, implementation of fine grain authorization. It offers DSLs, SDKs, and it is designed to be performant and scalable. Uh, because if you want to offer this as a platform for the entire enterprise, uh, you have no choice but to design something that is performant and scalable. Uh, so right now, OpenFGA is a sandbox project. Um, and uh, as a part of tax security, we did work with OpenFGA to do a uh, security audit of OpenFGA, um, or rather a security assessment of OpenFGA. And that is where um, the fit between OpenFGA and Backstage RBAC or Backstage Permissions Framework um, became something that we wanted to explore. So getting into some of the basic concepts just very quickly, um, RBAC, as uh, I mentioned earlier, basically takes into account the roles, the action, and maybe the resource. When it comes to ABAC, which is Attribute-Based Access Control, what happens is ABAC basically treats role as just one attribute of the actor. So now you have the ability to define more fine-grained attributes such as portfolio. And similarly, you can define attributes in terms of resources also. And you can bring those attributes into your authorization decision. So now you no longer have to take this authorization decision of does the person belong within that portfolio, that authorization decision doesn't need to be taken in the application. Instead, it can be taken within the authorization framework. What is relationship-based access control? What REBAC does is it tries to define your entire authorization model in terms of relationships between different objects in the model. And these objects could be the actors themselves. Typically, you'd call them users, right, within the authorization model. Um, it could be different resources. And it could even be some environmental conditions. For example, you may not want any deployments to be done during a moratorium. So you will basically lock those 
backstage pages that have to do with uh, maybe you know creating new applications or deployments you'll just log those during that moratorium so that's environmental conditions um in a way a back can be totally simulated using reback and reback is something that openfga implements so with this sort of a background let us get into uh, what i think all of you would have been waiting for which is basically understanding how the integration works and the demo so amrish let me just quickly uh, stop sharing and allow you to share your um, uh, application yeah sure thank you krishna <clears throat> so uh, so everyone hope you got some uh, idea about uh, what is open fg and what is our back and uh, what is the permission framework right in backstage so so oh, initially why we need to integrate backstage framework with uh, open fg right so even though we have uh, open and other uh, integrations so why we need uh, open fg to be integrated with backstage is like so the first uh, main thing is like um, so instead of using typescript to code a policy into into your backstage instance uh, we are using uh, open fg to create an update and manage the policies uh, it's like a, a small crud operations right so and also uh, to maintain uh, uh, your policies in more uh, flexible manner uh, we are creating uh, open fg model so from that we are uh, taking some data and then we are updating it right so uh, and also the another advantage is like uh, there is no need of a uh, relaunch right so once your backstage uh, insta instance is started running with open fga policies uh, no need to uh, relaunch the backstage again so it will automatically uh, get the results from the uh, result and response from the open fga and also um, it allows uh, a team to set their own policies uh, without uh, someone having a, a typescript knowledge so just an ui uh, is enough uh, them to update or uh, rework the policies right so so uh, as we talked uh, initially we have to create uh, a model in open fj right so here we are uh, uh, so yeah so here uh, let's take a scenario that a uh, role based uh, role based access for uh, backstage uh, catalog uh, deleter unregister and entity so here we have uh, uh, two things so uh, there is an user who is having an owner access so he can read and delete the entity and then uh, uh, same user we are defining a role as a viewer so then he can only read the entity not delete the entity so here we have uh, open fg model that we have created so there is a user we have a backstage in backstage we have a plugin called catalog so there's a two roles viewer so he can only uh, read the entity and uh, we have a owner he can read and delete the entity so this model that we have created using uh, dsl this can be also converted into json so once we click on this json we will get whole json to our clipboard and then we can uh, directly uh, uh, send it over the uh, api response so currently in our poc we are using uh, uh, api and also open fga supports some other uh, sdk and in, in many ways we can uh, access the open fga response and then uh, we can update the policies so once uh, we go into this right so how we are running uh, open fga in our local right so we have uh, pulled the docker image of uh, open fga and then once we run docker run uh, with the port right so it will automatically run in uh, our local so once we run uh, over here so so here i'm running it in my local in a docker so here it's running in a docker so here, uh, it's successfully running right so so initially what we are doing is we have to create a store so in this diagram we can able to see, in this flow chart we can able to see like so here this backstage is a store so initially we have to create some store so whatever the uh, policies that we are creating initially we need to have a store so inside a store we will have all the authorization model so in the store uh, we have created an author authorization model with the uh, entity i mean which uh, this is this comes under the types so uh, in, inside a type we will be having a multiple relations okay so here initially we have created a store uh, the, a store is a simple uh, post method uh, we are hitting this uh, slash stores um, uh, url 
So here we have a request body. In the body, we have created a store called Backstage. So once this we hit this URL, right, we will get a response as a store ID. So this store ID, we have to set it in the uh, uh, in the uh, TypeScript code. Then, uh, then only it can able to access which particular store that we have to store our, all our policies, right? And there also an, another feature that we can uh, get all these stores. So we can just uh, simply uh, get the stores using API. So it will give us the what are all the current stores and when it's created. So uh, what are all the authorization method uh, that we have it in the store. So once we created a store, uh, next, we have to add a uh, add an authorization model. So as I said, once we click on that uh, JSON, right? So we will get the uh, JSON like this. So this one we have to uh, pass it in the response body. So once we passed it in the response body, right? So we will get response as authorization mo model ID. So with this uh, uh, authorization model ID and store ID, we can dynamically update the uh, policies. So to update the policy and uh, delete the policy uh, there we comes we have created this uh, uh, plugin from the ui right so this is the uh, plugin that we have created using backstage so here we have uh, two features called check policy and then add or revoke policies right so so currently i'm logged in as a, a guest user into the backstage so it says uh, user the current user is development guest so one here we have all the uh, entities that are available right so if we check it in components currently we have one entity that called example website right so in example website we have a future called unregister entity so for example if user want to delete this entity right he need to be have a owner access not if he have a viewer access he can't delete it right so by default what uh, we said is like uh, by default the user cannot delete the entity until he is he has a owner access so currently it's disabled so once we go into this plugin and then check the policy it says a development guest have permission only to read the uh, example website right so once we check for the delete it says no he's not allowed to delete the entity right so let them uh, give a, a owner access so once i click on the add policy it says added permission to delete the entity so we have now both the access so once we uh, see i'm not refreshing the page and i'm not relaunching the backstage right so within a ui i'm just go, go ahead and checking it so currently it says go ahead you can delete the entity right so now i decided uh, to not give him my owner access simply i can revoke it from the ui so no need to go ahead and uh, type it in the uh, TypeScript code. Uh, uh, so it's less the uh, uh, work workload, right? So within a single click, we can able to control uh, everything from the uh, URL. So not only for the catalog, we can also update the policies for other plugins like uh, uh, templates, uh, software templates, and then other custom plugins. We can implement this feature. So this is the one simple example that we can uh, implement. We can also customize this plugin into like uh, we we can have a uh, multiple entities we can uh, uh, we can also define uh, based on their uh, uh, so whatever whether it's an experimental project or whatever it so once we go into this plugin right so here we have multiple options right type life cycle and everything so based on this also we can um, uh, control the uh, control and update the policies the main thing is you have to create a model first and then update that model uh, add it in the stores then you can dynamically update from the ui so let's see how uh, we have added it in the code so how the code works right so once user click on this act handle active policy right so this method will be called once i click on the active policy so it, it will comes under this and then it will call this send permission request okay so here what we are sending we currently we are sending uh, a entity type and then whatever the action so who is the current uh, user right so it will hit the uh, server, uh, so open FGA server, and then it will return the response from the uh, store. So it will check it in the store whether this uh, user has uh, delete for delete permission or read permission for this particular entity, and then it will uh, send back the response from the uh, open FGA. So once we uh, get the response from the open FGA, uh, we also showing uh, the messages in the uh, front end. Right in the UI, we are uh, uh, clearly says he has a uh, permission to read or delete, so everything. And also, 
it also update in uh, policies like in uh, in backstage we can have a uh, policies like uh, catalog read catalog delete so like that we have uh, multiple uh, permissions we have so based on the policies we are updating this uh, permissions so here it says uh, whether the user has uh, delete permission we are getting the response so once we get the response whether the response is allowed then it will allow to delete or else it will it will simply delete the uh, response right so this is the uh, main thing right so and also in a way to extend this policy you will need to extend the model as you mentioned right so yeah. in the model you might need to extend it and here also you'll need to make it like a bit more dynamic right in, in yeah. the policy dot uh, ts yes Absolutely. so currently in the model we have defined owner viewer and catalog entity read so here we can also add experimental and other owner so every, every tags that we can define over here and also we can add multiple users not only owner and viewer we can extend this and then we can uh, update the policies right understood okay yeah. And also, so uh, let's come to the uh, this chart. So how this uh, exact plugin works. So there is a security team who have access to the OpenFCA plugin UI that we have created. So once uh, user access this backstage resource uh, through this plugin, so it will hit the OpenFCA client with the all the details. So once it will hit the uh, client and then it will get the response from the server uh, with the policies. Hey, you are allowed to delete this entity. So once we get the response back to the ui so it will update in both uh, backstage permission framework as well as it updates the open fc like in ui okay. yeah and also not only uh, uh read delete entity we have uh, many permissions list that we have it in the backstage so based on that we can uh, dynamically update everything so this is the one of the example so so here's the thing uh, right so basically uh, we need to create a store all the configuration we have did so main thing that we have to configure it in uh, client is like uh, to understand client unity the particular store right so we have to add the store id in this particular code and then we have to add that authorization model if if the store and authorization model match then only we will get the response or else it will uh, simply deny and it says uh, no the store id and authorization model is not matched or uh, the authorization model that you are trying to access is uh, is not there like that it we will get the response so so if you had to wrap this up as a plugin this would go into the config file right the, yeah um, ah, okay exactly Great. So uh, here's the we have uh, integration uh, flowchart like uh, there is a security team uh, who have access to this OpenFCA plugin that we have created. So once we uh, access the OpenFCA plugin, uh, it has backstage resource. Through the backstage resource, we will send some data like uh, entity, the current user, and then uh, uh, what are all the uh, current permissions, right? So it will hit the OpenFCA client. So in client, we have all the authorization model, and then uh, uh, we defined a policies, right? So it will hit the server, and then it will return the policy back to the UI, as well as uh, from the uh, client, and we will get the allow or deny. So once we get allow or deny, so based on that, again it will comes to UI and as well as it will go to the backstage permission framework and it will dynamically update the uh, policies. So and also there is another thing like uh, we have uh, many permissions list in backstage framework, not only catalog, delete or read. We have uh, many other uh, 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 permissions list that uh, we can implement it in in different ways. So these are the uh, integration when we come to comes to the uh, open FCA with a backstage. Absolutely. And and what is interesting is if you notice in the older diagram that we had of the permissions framework, yeah. the policies were right here within backstage. But now we have basically lifted these policies out into open FGA. Yeah. yeah. And you know, that's what's giving all the capabilities that you have shared with your plugin, which is you don't need yeah. to restart it. You can just, you know, Change the model and yeah, it will basically sort of feed no the results. Really lunch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So I hope this has been um, uh, interesting. So yes. we had the demo. Uh, we also had a explanation of the way the flow works. So we have had a look at fine grain authorization, the backstage framework. Uh, we have had a small look at OpenFGA, the power of um, OpenFGA to define and um, utilize uh, OpenFGA for authorization. Uh, 
using the authorization models and also a demonstration of the approach. Um, if you want to catch us, uh, you can always reach out via GitHub. So we are both um, available there. And uh, of course, you can always reach out to Infosys. Um, modernization group is where we work. So we welcome any queries, any questions, or um, we look forward to interacting with you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone.